In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up your lead process to close more clients as a tech consultant. So we've been working together and I've shown you my version of Airtable. Now I want to make sure that you can set up your own. And I've got a couple of resources here that can help you. So I'm not going to go from the very start of setting up Airtable. Airtable itself has some built-in wizards that can help you and also there's some good resources. So the first one is Airtable.com. It's our guides start Airtable slash basics. So if you just go to Airtable, that will come up and that just shows you how to start. So first, what is Airtable, uh, how to set up, create your own databases, etc. So I'm going to show you some of that. But if I haven't given you enough instruction, you can go back here. The other one is uh, uh, an ex-client and a friend of mine, Gareth, has some great videos here. So I recommend it checking him out so it's a gap consulting on youtube he's got one which is if you search in there there's a, a air table for beginners 2023 an updated one but he's got lots of resources if you really want to go down a rabbit hole so this is the rabbit hole one this is the basic one and what i'm going to show you is how to set up your version of the lead database. So you'll have your air table, you won't have as many workspaces, etc. And it always looks a little different. But all you're going to do is just create a base. And you're going to create it within however you've named your, your overall structure. And what you're going to do, you can see over the end here, it's got get started. So it does give you some uh, building guides, but it normally comes and it's set up like this. So the quick way that you will set up and edit, so I'll just quickly do this, is you can go in here and you can edit a field. So you can change the name, you can change the type of field. So let's say you want that to be a long text and you go save, right? Let's say you want to create a, a completely new one. So a date field, you can go in here. And what you can just do is search for date and it shows up here now depends on your location so i'm based in australia where we have the day then the month if you're day, uh, based in the us you do that and i'll show you exactly what you need to do in each of the fields when we go through but that's how simple it is to set up a field and as i said um, you know there's two resources there's the get started and there's a video if you need more detail you know you can change the colors you can retitle it there's a whole lot of things you can do but what i'm going to do now is flip over to the base that i've already created and i will show you exactly what we're going to do so this is the base that that we'll be working on so you can create different views so this is a view of all the data so in the future we will show you how to set up all the reporting in different views, etc. But all we want to do today is get you set up with the very basics. So what I'm going to do is just show you each field and I'm going to show you the, uh, the definition of the field to get you started. So you've probably come in, as, as I said before, when you set up the database like I showed you, you might have three or four columns that's it what we're going to do is set up most of these columns for you so the first thing here you can see that if you go to the little eye that's the description field so if i go in here and i edit i can change the name of the description if i do it so this is the name of the company so i've got one under each of these which i'll show you right and if you want to edit any of this field you just go to edit field so this is a name it's a single line text because it's all it is is the name of the company that you're going to prospect right so that will be the first field now the first field is a defined field so it is there all the time so when you scroll it is always there so we've got the name of the company the next field we're going to create is a url field right so if i go in here and edit field you've got url so once again you can select different types so if you go url you select that and the url when you click on it it goes straight to that url that page and here i'll put the description which is company url from linkedin so i'm going to uh, get you to get most of the links out of linkedin not out of sales navigator so you may be in sales navigator actually collecting the information but we don't want to go to sales navigator we want you to view them within LinkedIn and if you right click on someone's profile in sales navigator it'll say view on LinkedIn so you go there and that's the link you can also on the 
click on the right and it'll say copy the LinkedIn URL or the LinkedIn profile, you can do that as well. Okay, so the next is company URL. Now, this is optional. Not everyone puts a company URL in there. We use it because you might be looking for multiple people in that company, right? But if you're only ever searching for one person, you may not need that. Then the next one is the target field, right? So you just create the field the exact same. Uh, you can, if you want, you can actually duplicate it. So if, if I go here, what you can do is duplicate, Kate field right and if I did what you want to do is not the cells but the field so you can create it and then you can just rename it that's a way to do it or you can just start from scratch the other thing what you can do is you can go insert to the right and then you can once again go through and create a URL field so there's a couple of ways, like any platform, there's a couple of ways you can do it. So then you could just create a URL field next to it uh, as an example. All right, so the next is the target person. So this is the person you want to reach out to within the company. So the URL, once again, is from the LinkedIn field. So you've created that. Then the next one, the next two, is just some sort of description that you might have, right? So for me, I'm after a tech consultant and it's different types of consultants. For you, it might be a vertical. It might be, you know, like uh, healthcare. It might be uh, finance. So it's just what you might have three or four different verticals that you're targeting uh, for your ICP and um, ideal client profile. So you just put those there. These are optional, right? And then what I've also got here is a main uh, SaaS platform. So for me, you know, I work with text partners, so I want to know what platform it is. For you, it might be a subset of that vertical, right? These are optional. But how do you create it? So all you do here is you go into uh, the field, you'd create the field. So this is a single select field. So it only allows you to select one, and you can have color code options in. And then you just type in the different format so you just add the option now you can either do them alphabetically or you can just have them as you put them in there right and you can change the colors etc that's all uh within in bounds but remember today we're just trying to set up the basic table for you which you and I will have another conversation when we meet next. So that's the main uh, SaaS platform. Once again, you won't have those titles. Your title will be based upon the, the couple of key elements. So it might be, you know, uh, for example, the vertical, which might be finance, and under that it might be mortgage, which is the sub-vertical. The next is the screening, and this is really important. So at the moment you're going to be doing all the screening, but in the future you'll actually have hopefully someone within your team or we can provide someone from our team to help qualify, right? And you want to, you're really building up their IP so that they can go to a profile and guess whether that's your ideal client or not, right? And when I say guess, it's based on the data that you put in here. So um, here it's uh, pretty easy. It's um, a single select again and reject is don't send the connection. So for example, um, you can see here that I've rejected some of the ones that my sales admin person's given me because I don't think they're the right fit or qualified. And qualified means that they'll then send that request. Now, you'll be doing this to yourself, so you'll be uh, rejecting some people and you'll put them in there so that it actually creates even a bit of a pattern for yourself as to why you reject some people versus others. And then you've got the rejection uh, reason. So if I go in here and edit the text field, the rejection is multiple select, right? Because there might be multiple reasons that you are rejecting someone. So it's not a single select, it's a multi select. And then some of the reasons I might have here is that they're, you know, they're a competitor to me, it's not the right fit, they're not in the right industry. Um, but if they only come up with a, the company, I could not find the founder, the size of the business isn't right. Um, you're already a connection. So there's different reasons. You'll come up with your own reasons and we can build that in our sessions together. So that's rejection area. And then you just want to do a free text field. So once again, if I go in here, um, we're going to do long text here rather than single text field uh, so that you can put in more reasons for why you rejected that person. And once again, just you self-educate yourself to begin with and then what we do is you're going to train someone to do this on your behalf because there's a lot of data mining you've got to do where you look at a profile to work out whether you send the connection request or not and we want to hand that off to someone else at some stage. The next is the pre-engagement, right? And what we've done here, this field here is a check 
box field. So it's effectively, and you can change the style, but you know, I just keep the default, which is a tick. But what it's basically saying is that you're going to, before you send the connection request, you're going to like and comment on one of their posts. Right now, only do this if you can add value to the comments. So some people don't post at all. Some people post comment, uh, post that you can't really comment on. But if you can, it's a way and, you know, with the way that the algorithm works, it will it will tell someone in the notifications that, that you've actually made a comment. So when you send the connection request through, there's a link, all right? So we, we don't want to make it too obvious that it looks like the only reason you commented is because of the sending the connection request. So don't put nice post because, you know, that then just looks like it's spam. So put an intelligent comment against the, the, the post and then send the connection request. So this is a date field. So I showed you before when you set up the dates, just base it, base it on your location. So for me, I'm in European. Uh, that's my time zone. You don't need to include a time and you don't need to display the time zone. Uh, and this is really the date the connection was sent. So it's basically simple as that, the date that's sent. The next one is the accepted date. So there's, you can, you know, each time someone accepts, you can do it. But if you're not quite sure, what you can do is just go onto their profile where it's got the contact information on their main individual profile within LinkedIn. And in that contact information section, you can just click on the profile and you can see the date connected. All right, so it's very simple. That will show you the date connected and you can put that in there. Then this is when you're sending the messages and I call the connection request a message, right? Even if you don't send a message, like sometimes, you know, we'll talk about this in our calls, but 50% of the messages you may send without a personal invite, 50% you may send a note. Regardless of that, you just put the date that that first connection was sent and once again, that's a date field. Then the second message, you would do the same. Now, the second message is normally a thank you for uh, for connecting. So it's a simple message. I'm going to give you the scripts for these messages. So that's fine. And then you might have multiple other messages, right? Now, uh, this is, you know, we'll discuss in detail here because if you send a sequence of messages, the same messages every time, that that's fine. But what I normally find is we... Um, ab lib and we send different messages but it just keeps a record of when you sent those messages right and you can have as many messages in the sequence as you want i've just put five here but you can just you know duplicate the field change the description and have more the next is the campaign number now this is optional but what we do is test different campaign types so one might be you send a, a particular message that is around uh, a mutual connection so that would be a campaign type which would be a mutual connection and that might be campaign five for example so you put the number five in so what we can do is go back and report and see how many what's the acceptance connection oh sorry how many people have um, accepted based on different campaign types so that's a little bit, bit more advanced but you can put the field in there and we can always add these fields later as well uh, this one uh, is a calculation field so if I just go in to the field and edit it so what you'll do is depends on where you have put the field uh, this one might be a little tricky so if you can't do it like this is the connection uh, date this is the actual formula, but if you can't get it to work based off the the, the field, um, you know, I'll basically, I can help you through it. But what it's doing is that uh, LinkedIn, we, we say within 30 days, you if they haven't accepted, you should withdraw it, and then you can't send them another request for three weeks. The reason we do this is that if you've got a lot of outstanding connection requests, LinkedIn may view that as that you're spamming, and they may suspend your account because of it, right? We haven't had many instances where it's happened because now there's only, you know, roughly 100 you can send a week. This was sort of brought in more when it was a lot more that you could send, okay? But we just want to make sure that we don't have a lot of outstanding requests, and that just gives you the date. So it calculates the date you should do it based off the day that it was, uh, the connection was first sent. This is automatic field, so it's automated. Um, so what you can do is if I just go into the edit fields here and what what it is is the this 
here is the date created is the created time is what you press and once again I'm European you select the time that you want you don't need the time it's just the date and you go save so that'll actually put in the date created and then the date modified if we go in here edit field and what we do is last modified time is what's put what you last modified time is what you select and then you go all edible fields. You can be very specific. So if a certain part of this whole row is done, we just do all and the formatting, once again, you put it to your time zone, okay? And if you ever want to change the description, you can just click on that little eye and change that description, okay? So I know that that seems a lot, but I'm here to guide you, but it's just for you to go and set this up for the first time and most importantly, start to put your targets in there of the people that we want to target. Now, you don't have to put the company URL in and the name, right? You could just do target person and start from there. But I think I recommend that you set it up as much as the same as we are now. And then what we can do is adapt it on the call. If you've got any questions, just reach out to me at paul at paulhigginsmentoring.com. And as I said, we'll talk about this more in our next call. Thank you.